the NFL really slipped up letting the Baltimore Ravens have this advantage. But what advantage is it? Well, it's something that we've talked about already, but it got even better. And I'm going to tell you exactly how. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn them notifications on and leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. Let's get into it. So today, Nate Wiggins, who had been out, he had missed a little bit of time with a shoulder injury. He was back at practice practicing that's a beautiful thing because in his debut in the nfl he looked the part he looked like he was a baltimore raven he looked like he was a lockdown nfl cornerback and he looks like he is ready to take on the best of the best when it comes to nfl wide receivers week one versus the chiefs it's going to be super fun. But we've also continued to highlight a lot of people in this Baltimore Ravens secondary, like the obvious Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams, Marlon Humphrey, who he'll be healthy this year. That was a big part of last season why he struggled at times because he just was not healthy. He missed a lot of time too. Brandon Stevens, who in this second year of him starting that outside corner, he's looking to take another leap and just really have consistency. So the Baltimore Ravens have a lot in the secondary. And guess what? They ain't even got all their people pieces yet because Arthur Millett who played well in the slot last year for them and was an excellent blitzer he's gonna be out for probably the month of September but he'll get back soon so the Ravens will become even stronger when he returns TJ Tampa another versatile player in the secondary who he just recently returned to practice they got him as well but with all that being said the Ravens, they're getting even stronger in the secondary, and this is somebody who you need to pay attention to, that being Jalen Armour Davis. Jalen Armour Davis is coming on strong. Jalen Armour Davis has continued, like Jeff Zrebik said the other day, he's been stacking good practices, and that's exactly what we want because, say for instance, again, we got our starters. We, we got our main guys in the secondary, the guys that are going to get the most playing time. But just imagine if Jalen Armour Davis, who the Baltimore Ravens have continued to have high hopes for, just imagine if he continues to turn that corner in the secondary. Our depth guys will be that much greater. Our guys who are backups will be that much stronger. I know my guy Sam Najoku from uh, Ravens Talk Podcast, he's been talking Jalen Armour Davis up a lot, saying that he's heard a lot of great things about Jalen Armour Davis coming out of camp. But we've been seeing a lot of the same stuff, especially from the Ravens beat writers. They've been saying that Jalen Armour Davis has been doing such a phenomenal job at training camp. And then we saw the other day, in that first preseason game, Jalen Armour Davis, he did not look bad at all. He was doing his thing. And we will continue to see him in the upcoming preseason games as well. So with him really getting better, with him getting even more solid and him just continuing to stack good practices and hopefully it continues to stack good games, then this is only a positive for the Baltimore Ravens. Because again, obviously we know the Baltimore Ravens secondary, the injuries, they get tested every single year. They already being tested this year, but the way that they set themselves up, they have so much high quality depth that they can withstand a lot of this. Now, we don't want them getting injuries, of course. We want them to be healthy because a healthy Ravens team, especially healthy in the secondary. Oh, my goodness. I ain't even mentioned all Darius Washington. I ain't even mentioned all Darius Washington because he's somebody that could do so much different stuff too. But with them just getting better, them getting stronger, them getting healthier, it's not even fair. So Bleacher Report, they put out an article a couple of days ago on one player from each NFL team that they should consider trading. For the Baltimore Ravens, it was none other than Ben Cleveland. Whoa, and let's see their reason why. They said, the arrival of tackle Roger Rosengarten, second round pick, has forced a bit of a musical chairs act along the Baltimore front five. A former tackle at Minnesota, 6'8", Daniel Filele has bumped to right guard to allow room for Rosengarten, leaving Ben Cleveland outside the starting five. Cleveland, a former first third round pick, excuse me, <laughs> has shown flashes in his first three campaigns. However, he struggled with consistency and avoiding injury, which have limited his ability to secure a starting role. With the rapid emergence of center Tyler Linderbaum, 2023 Pro Bowler, and, in and intrigue surrounding Andrew Voorhees, Cleveland sits at the foot of a steep climb up towards legitimate playing time. Entering the last year of his rookie deal, trading Cleveland wouldn't be a move to free up cap space. Rather, presenting the former top 100 pick with an opportunity to compete elsewhere would in turn see Baltimore add capital in the draft where they've consistently succeeded in adding talent no matter the round. See, that's tricky though. Because that last line, it, it sort of contradicts this whole thing, right? Because Ben Cleveland was somebody that they added 
in the draft in what the third round a couple of years ago. But this the end of the line. It says, uh, in turn, it, they will see Baltimore add capital in the draft where they've consistently succeeded in adding talent no matter the round. If that was the case, then we wouldn't even be having this conversation about Ben Cleveland. But anyway, um, with Ben Cleveland, would the Baltimore Ravens consider trading him? They could, but in my opinion, I would. Because for Ben Cleveland, if you decide to trade Ben Cleveland, you'll get maybe a fifth-round pick, maybe a sixth-round pick. And, hey, you never know what those could turn into. But why not keep him for the depth? Because you've tried him out at center, and he's done solid there. You've tried him out at right guard. So you tried him out at some different positions along the offensive line. Why not keep him just so he can be a depth piece? We were just talking about the depth earlier with the secondary, but why not keep Ben Cleveland? And we know you, you, it's not looking like you're going to re-sign him. All, all, all signs are pointing to him leaving the Baltimore Ravens after the season is over. So why not just let him ride it out and, and he be depth for the offensive line just in case he needs to come in for somebody, just in case somebody gets hurt. Hopefully they don't, but just in case... Why not let him stick around? Shout out to my guy, Keontae, who sent this next question. He said, so I've been so scared. <laughs> he said, so I've been so scared of the backup QBs we have, but I think I have a solution. Since the Browns took one of ours and he clearly seems to have a spot, why not poach Dorian Thompson Robinson, uh, ODTR? His play style is super similar to Lamar, and he has shown some growth, judging by the preseason game. I think he could be a great backup for us. What do you think i've heard the opposite i've heard that actually tyler huntley is looking like the odd man out when it comes to the cleveland browns because they have obviously deshaun watson they have Jameis winston they have dtr and they have tyler huntley uh, but yeah I've, I've heard the opposite so i mean we'll see we'll see in like a couple of weeks uh who the odd man out ends up being or possibly odd men out but I do think the uh, backup quarterback is something that the Baltimore Ravens do need to be taking a look at. Now, with Dorian, with DTR, um, I wouldn't mind that because he we saw him in live game action uh, last year. Remember when Deshaun Watson was supposed to go, but then last second they were like, no, he's not playing. Then DTR got that last second start. Now, he was against the tough Baltimore Ravens defense, and he didn't do too well. But um, in that game, like he got he got some experience. He got some experience last season um, while Deshaun Watson was out. Um, and <clears throat> he's just, he would just be, a, I don't want to say a breath of fresh air, but he would just be somebody that they got an arm. They, they, they can move. I wouldn't say he's similar to Lamar Jackson. I, I don't see that. But um, he's somebody that I feel could put us in better positions for winning football games than possibly a Josh Johnson or maybe even a Devin Leary. Speaking of the Baltimore Ravens backup QB position, next question came from my guy, Anthony. He said, what do you think about the Ravens signing Cam Newton as Lamar Jackson's backup? He can't be any worse than what we have now since Snoop is gone. Thank you and have a blessed day, fam. Hey, I appreciate it. Hey, look, man. Snoop, a lot of people hated on Tyler Huntley when he was here. A lot of people would talk down on his name and say this and that and the third about Tyler Huntley when he was here. He could, I ain't even gonna repeat what they said. But now, like, so many people keep seeing it, especially during that first preseason game. So many people showing Tyler Huntley so much love now. Where was this love at when Tyler Huntley was here anyway? Um, with Cam Newton, I, I would like that option. I would love that option. But I know I was listening to Cam Newton podcast the other day. He said he hadn't worked out in a super long time in the longest. He said that this is the longest that he's gone without working out in a while. Now, he could obviously change that by working out. And Cam Newton obviously still has the football smarts. Um, he was somebody that very accomplished in the NFL, former MVP as well. Um, with Cam Newton, uh, is he done, though? If, he, if he's done, then hey, this conversation is over. But if he, because it seems like he's, it's like when I watch his podcast, I watch the fourth and one. When I watch that with him and Peggy, um, I feel like I know Peggy. I know, Boog, Peggy, Boog, Peggy. That's, all, that's what you hear the whole podcast. But shout out to them. They be doing their thing. It's funny. I like that podcast a lot. But um, with him, it seems like he has 
not directly said it, but when you hear him have conversations about football, it sounds like he knows that he's done. Like, that's a wrap. Like, it's over. He's not going to be playing anymore. He hasn't come out flat, straight up and said, like, oh, I'm done being in the NFL. I'm retired. He hasn't said that, but it seemed like he said everything but that and sort of alluded to that. Now, um, I do remember last year, I believe it was, he did say, he, he listed a bunch of quarterbacks that he would be more than willing to be the backup for, and Lamar Jackson was one of them. If the Baltimore Ravens did land Cam Newton, I would not be mad at that. If they had him as a backup, I would love that. I, I, I really would. Um, he's somebody that, like I mentioned about Ryan Tannehill, he's somebody that also has played in literally every single type of game there is to play in, but... Tannehill's played in every game except the Super Bowl. Cam Newton has played in every single game there is to play in, including the Super Bowl. So he obviously knows what it takes to get there. He has plenty of experience. And Ryan Tannehill in his career, he was solid. Uh, and he, he did have some very nice, memorable moments, especially against the Baltimore Ravens in the playoff game. But anyway, um, Cam Newton, like, this dude was the best player in the NFL in one season. What was that, 2015, I believe? So and I know that was a while ago, but still, he he has definitely had a lot of achievements. Um, so he he's had a very decorated career. It's been amazing. But um, one thing I would wonder, because I mean, you, you see how a lot of Ravens fans say, "Oh yeah, we hated Tyler Huntley. We don't like Tyler Huntley." Da, 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 when he was here, but now that he's gone, and you see these other backup, like, "Oh, we miss Tyler Huntley. Oh man, Tyler Huntley. Oh man, we'll Snoop. We miss you, Snoop." Now, um, I will wonder. Say, for instance, if Lamar Jackson had a game where he was struggling at, knowing that Cam Newton was on the sideline, how would Ravens fans react? Now, I know the majority would be like, no, Lamar, keep doing your thing. But there will be some that would be like, oh, put Cam in, put Cam Newton in. But, and that's something that I just – and I know it's not up to the fans. No, it's not up to the fans who decides who goes in at quarterback and whatnot. But – I just I I feel like that would happen with with a, it was some of them not the majority, but anyway I bottom line I, I would not mind if Cam Newton became the Baltimore Ravens backup quarterback. Do I see it happening though? No, not at all. I, I don't think he's gonna play at all anymore in the league. How are y'all feeling about the Baltimore Ravens situation at pass rush? Uh, and the reason that I ask is because the conversation came up a lot yesterday. Now that it is official that Matt Judon, former Baltimore Raven and now former New England Patriot, he got traded to the Falcons for a third round pick. And I know there were a lot of Ravens fans that were hoping that Matt Judon would be back with the Baltimore Ravens uh, and that, that the Ravens would trade for him and take on the rest of his contract and possibly maybe sign him to an extension but anyway that's done because he's in atlanta now but how do y'all feel about raven's situation at edge at outside linebacker just as a pass rushing unit as a whole uh because you got again david ajabo uh and he hasn't been cleared to play in a game yet hopefully he gets there soon you got adafe away you got tavius robinson you got Kyle Vinoy, the veteran. You got Adisa Isaac, who recently started practicing. I know he was dealing with the hamstring injury for a little bit. But how, how do y'all feel that group is? Do you feel that that group is going to be enough for the Baltimore Ravens to get where they need to go? Or do you feel like they still need just a bit more?